This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. When the hot water needs to be hot, when the drain needs to drain, when the toilet needs to flush, you need to do two things. Stop freaking and call Beacon. Beacon Plumbing, Heating, and Mechanical. On call and there when you need them most. 1-800-FREAKIN or beaconplumbing.net. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at bjgeeknation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. This is the mighty rock starring DJ and Migs mornings. Because, hey, at least once a day, you should experience a BJ. You know, I'm ready for my BJ. 99.9 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. I've heard that you don't have the Odyssey app yet, and I'm I'm concerned because I know you love us. I know you love The Rock. Well, take us wherever you go. Listen to us whenever you want, whether it be live, on demand with our show. Uh, that's what the Odyssey app is all about. And you get all these Odyssey exclusive stations that are curated for listeners just like you. I mean, let's play B. Oh, all right. Hey. I'm wow. not done talking, wow. big just voice like, guy. Just like that. Sorry about that, Vicky. I tend to point at people, to, you know, but for different reasons. So, uh, you know, I love that Vicky's trying to learn how to run things. This is fantastic. Yeah. But Steve, you still have words to say. Do not be stopped. I know. All I was going to say is I love myself a good power ballad. Yeah. So much that sometimes you just want to hit a button before you're supposed to. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> Songs by Skid Row, like I Remember You. Every rose has its thorn by poison. You want to yeah. hear these songs? You want to put your lighters in the air? Woo! Oh, check out the Odyssey station lighters in the air on the Odyssey app. All right. And uh, Vicky, get ready because this point will be for you. Uh, <laughs> download the Odyssey app today to get all the audio that matters to you. That's A-U-D-A-C-Y Odyssey. Let's play Let's get cracking! Release the Kraken. Yeah, and maybe Steve will get a win like the Kraken didn't do yesterday against one of up. the worst teams ever. Oh, don't bring it up at all. Worst teams uh, ever. Yes. <laughs> yes. I was looking at uh, the, 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 the records of both teams. I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah, we got a chance. And then I remember when they first played and we're like, oh, yeah, we've got a chance. And then the same thing. And we were winning. The, 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 yeah, yeah, we'll get lost in the weeds. But we should have beat. You got to beat the teams that are underneath you. I uh, yes. know. You got to beat all those teams. <laughs> you need to beat not every be, team. Not if you're trying to get that first round back, great draft pick, you don't. <laughs> That's all I gotta say is the Coyotes are ahead of us for the draft pick. I mean, I mean, even though it's a lottery, so I say keep losing, people. All right, then that's the spirit. Let's yeah. get to our contestant today. We've got Lance and Edmonds. Lance, are you there? I am here, ready to end Steve's winning way. Yeah, oh. Lance, I love it. I love this positivity. All right, Steve, get out of here. Goodbye. <laughs> For those playing at home, Lance will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Lance, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? I'm ready. The newly released show, How I Met Your Father, is on what streaming platform? Netflix. No. Hulu. Yes. What is the official state animal of Wisconsin? Badger. Yes. Actress Emma Roberts is the niece of which other famous actress? Julia Roberts. Yes. If there are 16 cups in one gallon, how many cups are in three gallons? 58. No. 
48. Yes. What instrument did Cliff Burton play in Metallica? Bass. Yes. In which decade did the cartoon Tom and Jerry premiere? 50s. No. 40s. Yes. How many Matrix movies have been released? Four. Yes. What color is the cross on the flag of Finland? Yellow? No. White? No. Blue? Yes. Which U.S. president owned a pet hyena? Jesus. Um, <laughs> Teddy Roosevelt? Yes. The Shiba Inu breed of dog originates from which Asian country? China. No. And Lance, so close. Oh. Nine out of ten. Ooh, it's Japan, isn't this it? Is yes, be, it is. Oh, it's going to be so good, though. This better not be the difference maker. It, I, I, st- I still feel like Steve can go down. Uh, Steve definitely could go down, but yeah. there is that little bit of wiggle room right there. Getting a song ready. I don't care what you say. And I'm just gonna... like, and I mean just like Luke Skywalker, sometimes all you need is an exhaust port, so. Oh, wow. <laughs> huh? that, that could go so many different ways. Oh, yeah. I kind of realized that once I said that. Um, well, Steve, there's a chance. Are you ready? Oh, yes. The newly released show, How I Met Your Father, is on what streaming platform? It's on Hulu. Yes. What is the official state animal of Wisconsin? Jeez. No. <laughs> A badger. Yes. Woo! Actress Emma Roberts is the niece of which other famous actress? Julia Roberts. Yes. Huh? There are 16 cups in one gallon. How many cups are in three gallons? <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> Math. You can do it. 16 cups in one. 16, 16. Okay. 30. 48. Yes. Woo! What instrument did Cliff Burton play in Metallica? Oh. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Base. Yes. In which decade did the cartoon Tom and Jerry premiere? 50s. No. 40s. Yes. How many Matrix movies have been released? Too many. <laughs> Three. No. Four. Yes. What color is the cross on the flag of Finland? Yellow. No. Red. No. White. No. Damn. Which oh. U.S. president owned a pet hyena? Richard Nixon. No. Um, <laughs> I don't know. George Washington. No. Um... George Bush. No. One, two, wow. three, four, five, six, seven. You lose Woo! nine to seven. Lance made yeah, good yeah, on his yeah. promise. I love it, Lance. My shot. <laughs> he did call you out, Lance. You hit a dinger. Hit a dinger. Oh, uh, uh, he sure did. And thank you for this, Lance. Love this man. It's been a good year, man. We've had a lot of losses from Steve this year. <laughs> we really have. It's been an, an off year for you, an off season, yeah, so to yeah. speak. There, you know, the contestants have been stepping up. I mean, because Steve still is doing True. decent, but really, the contestants have been kicking it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the color that is the cross on the flag of Finland. Lance got that correct. It's blue. Oh, I'm so he, sorry for your loss. He also knew it was Teddy Roosevelt that owned a pet hyena. You figured it had to be it had to be like a president that, that's an iconic president. Yeah, and a little you bit know? older and that sort of thing. Yeah. I did like I did appreciate the Nixon guest though. That was Thank pretty you. awesome. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then there was one question you did not get to. The Shiba Anu breed of dog originates from which Asian country? Oh <laughs> Japan. <laughs> yes. Oh, so uh, if you would have gotten that, you still would have lost. But, yeah, you know, hey, yeah. at least yeah. you got that. You're- this podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. The best defense is a good offense. So before the sewer backs up into your home and wreaks havoc, stop freaking and call Beacon. Beacon Plumbing, Heating, and Mechanical is there for you when you need them most. 1-800-FREAKIN or beaconplumbing.net. Take the next step toward the career you want. Be it business, cybersecurity, healthcare, or more. UMGC can help you get there. No application fee when you apply by August 31st. Visit umgc.edu. Certified to operate by Chev. They needed to be perfect to get a win, is mm-hmm. what he's saying. Yes. Yeah. And that just ain't going to happen. Sorry. No. Yeah. So sorry for your loss. Hey, he is the voice of our Seattle Kraken. And frankly, he's got a lot of explaining to do. <laughs> oh, is, is it him? <laughs> yeah. He's got, you know what? He's, well, he's the only guy we can really talk to. Whether or not he really has anything to do with it, I don't care. It's John Forslund, the voice of the Seattle Kraken. Our buddy will join us at 917 on The Rock. 
Rock. We now return to BJ and Mays. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. BJ, you know, we always love having our next guest on. It's been just a pleasure to have him on so far halfway through the season. Please welcome to the show, the voice of the Seattle Kraken, John Forslund. John. Hey, boys. Hey, I almost, good morning. We almost oh, didn't have you. We, well, good morning to you, John. We almost didn't have you on because I feel like it's, you know what, it's all it's it's all on your shoulders. I, you know what, I don't know what's going really? on, but we, we've decided that you're the reason for this season that we're having. So there you go. I mean, whether it's true or not, whether it's right or not, sorry. You know what, your, it's your fault. So there you go. Should I should I hang up now or what do you no do? no BJ you can hang oh. up and I'll talk to John because I don't care win or lose it's always a blast having John on the show. No, we have to, you know how life is, John. You got to blame somebody, and usually you find the most innocent person. You know the guy who's done a great job all season long. I don't care. We're still going to blame you anyway, even though you've been you've been really so it. fun to listen to, man. Um, <laughs> the way the way you and JT call games seriously, um, I, I have I have a lot of fun listening to you guys, and and it is always tough. You got an expansion team, there are expectations, and of course. It hasn't gone the way a lot of us fans thought it would, and even some of the experts, at least so far. And you still, I mean, you guys still, man, make it happen. And there's a lot of honesty that comes from JT. When when something gets screwed yeah. up on our side, JT doesn't sit there and go, oh, well, you know, he'll go like, hey, man, that guy really needs to be better. And I love that about you guys. Well, I appreciate that. And you know what? That's that's come out organically, and that's something that, you know, I, I told JT at the beginning of this relationship two things. I said, number one, we gotta we got to forge out a friendship. And, you know, that's easy to say, and then you have to accomplish it. And, and we have in a short period of time. I, I love the guy. I love his commitment. I love the fact that he, he loves the game, and he, he's blazing a trail here, and he's doing a remarkable job. And the other thing is, as I told you guys, I think before – uh, the season even started, um, we have to earn the trust of the fans. And if we don't deliver the game that way, then we're going to blow it. And we're not going to have anybody's trust. So we're going we're gonna to do the best we can. There's no question that we're there for the Kraken Nation. We're there for deliver the message. Uh, we're treating each and every game as its own entity. And I think that's important when you're having a challenging season like this. So that's where the energy comes from. And, and you got to have fun. And you got to tell the truth. And it all can be accomplished. But for a first-year guy... Um, I love him. He's done a remarkable job. Well, I was talking with one of the guys earlier on it, just the, just the difference of like from the preseason games to now. It's just been such a cool evolution. You know, we knew how great you are, but then just to watch how JT has evolved into just an incredible color commentator. It's been a, it, I, I do. I love the broadcast because of the, just the insight that both of you bring to the game. Well, you have to be yourself, right? You guys know that. And, and in order to be, um, you know, media personality with any kind of credibility, if you're not authentic, you, you've blown that opportunity too. And that's what he's been able to do. And that's what I like about the, the team that we're formulating here in a, in a short period of time is I can be me. He can be him. Um, we're different, but we're the same. And I think that's kind of how we uh, parlay it out to the audience. And so far, so good. Thank God. Uh, and we're talking to John Forslund, voice of your Seattle Kraken, which, of course, you can catch on Root Sports, uh, Comcast Channel 627, and uh, a game tomorrow night, right, Steve, in Anaheim, I think? Yeah, tomorrow night's game, though, is on uh, ESPN+. Plus. But yes. Oh, dang it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that's it. I, I'm done with ESPN+. Plus. I mean, come on. Can, we want, John, we want can, the can, can I just call you and you do the play-by-play on the phone? I'd love it. I'll come over the house. How's that? In. Oh, wow. We got a, we got a crazy two-year-old, yeah. but you know what? She'll be on her best behavior, I'm sure. That's all also, right. We'll drive them out one way or the other. I will order pizza. We'll have a blast, man. It'll be a good yeah. time. <laughs> also, John, I'm really, I'm really stoked because uh, I, uh, I guess there's the first ever Seattle Kraken Super Skills Showcase that's happening this Saturday at 3 p.m. at Climate Pledge Arena. And by the way, if you want more details, go to SeattleKrakenHockey.com. Um, I, you know, this, I, I don't know how often this is done. You know, you see it at the All Star Game, the Skills Showcase, but this is kind of a cool thing. And 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 d- does every team do this once a year or whatever, or no. is this something where the Kraken thought this would be something we should do? Yeah, no, not every team does this. It's been done, but not every team does this. And and the Kraken deserve a, a lot of credit for being able to put this event together in a short period of time. Somebody had a brainstorm. They decided, you know, we're going to go ahead and do this and uh, throw it all together like they have, organize it, um, make it affordable for everybody. The tickets are only $10. All of the proceeds go to One New Foundation. Um, so we're going to have, uh, you know, I talked to uh, somebody last night about this. I believe they're expecting around 12,000 people already. Um, and we're going to have fun. And you're going to see the players in a totally different light. 
Um, there's going to be some authentic hockey skills. There's going to be some things you'll be surprised that they're going to, they're going to show off. So, um, you know, everybody's going to be there. And, and again, it's just to, to kind of let your head down, enjoy yourselves and, and see the team in a, in a different way. Um, because we're lucky to have these guys, you know, we're lucky to have this franchise in this market. And I think this is just another step forward. Looking at the, 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 the first half of the season, obviously we, we've talked about how we wish it would be a little bit more W's, but I mean, every game has been, for the most part, f- right down to the end of the game where you're like, oh, there's a chance. There's a chance. And that's all you can hope for. It's been a really fun yeah. season. What's been the highlights for you so far watching this team? And I don't know if you could come up with one, but do you feel like is there a certain, not, not that part. I'm, I'm talking about like, uh, can you come up with an MVP for the team that you think, okay, this is the guy that I feel like has really been carrying the identity of the team? Well, you know, there's a lot of different players who have had, you know, roles at, at certain times. I think from start to finish so far, you know, probably Jared McCann. Yep. I mean, he's had a career season goal scoring wise. He's a, he's a guy who's in and around scoring plays each and every night. But when you start rattling off players, um, there's another one coming. And even though the season, again, as you point out, has been not, you know, to a level that anybody wants, but there are great individual stories. There's also been some heartbreak with a guy like Brandon Tan of yeah. going out with a season ending injury. Yeah. Um, yeah. and he was on his way to becoming the most popular player and he still is. But not to sound too hokey about this, but I think I will. It's, it's watching the fans. Um, develop in that building and develop an identity. And I've been around a long time and I'm enjoying that more than anything. And I like the fact that maybe that's coming first because even last night, uh, you know, the game started out okay for the Kraken. And then, you know, there's a turnover and Arizona scores and now they're chasing the game of the third period. They get to two to one. There's life again. They fall behind three to one. Then they get to three to two. There's life again. The goalie's standing on his head at the other end. They end up losing the game. But every game seems to be like that, right? Yep. And and the fans carry it along. They carry along the energy. The building's remarkable, and they sit right on top of the rink. So I'm not blowing smoke here. This is real. And when the team gets better, this thing is going to be unbelievable to, to watch, and the fans are going to really uh, – be a big part of the ride. Talk about the team getting better. I think a lot of us are getting excited, especially this morning. And you see our first uh, our first pick of the last year's draft, Matty Benier scored a goal in, for Team USA. Granted, a lot of people scored a goal for Team USA. They won eight yeah. nothing against China, but his goal was sick. I mean, that's got to be a guy that you're just looking forward to seeing in a cracking jersey. Yeah, I am, and I also want him to be given the freedom to develop too. And um, this is a tough league, so uh, he's a remarkable player. And he's going to be a big part of this thing moving forward. But when the Olympics are over, when his college season ends, and hopefully they can win a national championship, they have a loaded team at Michigan. They they should have a great opportunity to do that. But when that ends and they decide, they be in the management to uh, to bring him on board, and I think that's the plan, um, you might see him by the end of the season. And he might be just absolutely great or he might have a hard time, you know, finding his way at mm-hmm. first, but that's okay um, because that's, you know, this is not a league where first-year guys automatically walk in and right. have success like you see in other sports. And that's the hardest thing to, to uh, get across to new fans about hockey, that it's a it's difficult even for first-round picks to jump right in. Sure, there's generational guys like McDavid and Sidney Crosby, and these players at 18 have been able to jump in and have big-time success, but those are few and far between. So let them grow. Let him grow with the team, but certainly uh, he's going to be a big time player for the Kraken. Who are we going to see first, Matty Beniers on the ice or our team mascot, man? Oh, well, that's a good question. <laughs> had to that's bring that up, didn't you, boy? He's been sour about this, John. He, I mean, you Steve... know, there, there are two things oh. that are real difficult to get right now. What will Ron Francis do at the trading deadline, and where's the mascot? And yeah. those questions are both at the same level right now, and I have no clue. <laughs> You know, John, is it, it is exciting because we're talking to John Forslund, voice of your Seattle Kraken, and, and pretty much almost every game you can hear it on Root Sports. And listen, I watch it on Root Sports, too. You know, John, because we are an experienced sports city, that is a part of any, of any sport experience that a lot of us enjoy. And that is when your team is in a situation where they may not be competitive or may not have a chance to get into the playoffs or even deep, you get to go, all right, then. But we could get some really good draft picks. We yeah. could really build for the future and a lot of sports fans like myself love that aspect of the game so that we don't even get that depressed if the season is you know is the way it's looking right now because it's like oh man but what can we get and and 
you know, when did you, John, when do you think they make that decision that they are going to be either A, buyers or B, sellers as it gets closer? Because right now, boy, it's hard for me to tell, you know, even though we're in last place, you feel like that you could turn it around and get into the playoffs. And, you know, you're, that can happen with this team. When do you think they will make that decision that, well, they'll go, OK, the evaluation is here. How close to the deadline? I think they're already by that. I think oh, they're wow. already in a situation where they're they're looking ahead and looking mm-hmm. at you know uh, viable assets that they can they can look at here. And teams will be calling and and asking. And Ron's going to have to um, uh, up the ante to make sure that he accrues you know the necessary return for whatever player it is. And I've seen this before with him. I, I, I saw it in Carolina. I, you know, he was very stubborn about his approach, which is stubborn in a good way. Uh, drafting and developing is the only way to get this done in a real sense. Um, the Vegas situation is a little bit different. They had lightning in a bottle their first year, and they made it to the final, as we know. And then they started to say, well, because of the success, we've got to win now. They've mortgaged a lot of their future. They've got a lot of big names on their team right now. And they're probably in a three- to four-year window to win the cup, and then that's going to age out. And then I don't know what's left on the other side of it. But that's their issue. For the Kraken, if you look at teams like Colorado, Carolina, Florida, all elite teams right now, just take a glance at their rosters and you'll see how many first round picks and draft choices they have on their rosters, but they went through a period of pain to get there. And Ron was part of that with the Hurricanes where he was able to dig in. They had nothing in the cupboard. They were in a win it now type of mentality season to season, just trying to make the playoffs and keep the fan base alive. But he went in there and said, no, 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 we got to, we got to do this the right way. We got to get some prospects and draft choices and go this direction. And because of that foundation, uh, they're where they're at right now. So they're laden with their own picks. Florida is the same. Colorado is the same. And that's what the Kraken are going to start with veneers and go from there. So I think they're going to have some prime draft uh, positioning uh, this season, next season and beyond. And that's the way they're going to do it. And then you can make trades, augment it. Then you can go out and you can get the free agency. And there's no problem here with that. Ownership is so committed and they're deep that they've given him the opportunity to go right to the cap. And he will at the right time. There's no reason to do it now. So that's basically the message. That's what he's been up to. And March 21st is the deadline. That's going to be very interesting. And John, one last question I want to throw out there. I just saw a chance for you to talk about it because I think it's really cool that uh, it was at February 17th, the game against Winnipeg. History is going to be made in the, in the broadcast booth. And I saw you yeah. guys talking about it last night. And I thought that was and, and it involves you not being there. But it's what a what a cool thing that's going to be happening. Well, this is an unbelievable opportunity for everybody. Right. So, number one, um, I'm getting a chance to get back in some national work here. Uh, it's been hard to to do that because I'm, I'm totally committed to this and, think, and I'm so happy that I did. But anyway, I'm going to do Vegas and Colorado uh, Wednesday night for Turner for TNT. Nice. Uh, huge game. It could be Jack Eichel's return um, to the, to health and playing for Vegas. So it could be a, a an um, unbelievable situation there. But, uh, you know, what do we do? And the Kraken were so supportive of me taking advantage of this opportunity that they looked at, you know, what do we do now for the television side and the fact that they're going to give Everett fits you an opportunity to move over from radio where he has done a remarkable job, step in alongside JT and the two of them were the first two of color to broadcast the national hockey league game on television. And it's just uh, at the right time, this is black history month. Uh, the Kraken have been terrific in terms of their messaging across the board with all the things that are important in life. And, um, I, you know, again, uh, Biggie and I are great friends. Uh, we, we, we really have a camaraderie with this broadcast crew that's second to none. So I, I'm overjoyed that they're getting this opportunity. They'll do the game in Winnipeg. I'll return for the game in Calgary unless he knocks me out of my spot. That's probably <laughs> doable. Um, yeah. But anyway, that that's what this is all about. So it's great for everyone. But most importantly, it, it's the Kraken, you know, doing the right thing again. And um, to me, that's as important as wins and losses. And that's why, you know, we tag a lot of things with that's Kraken hockey because that's what um, a, a move like this is really about. And, and Everett and JT will be remarkable together i know they will that's fantastic man uh, again uh john thank you so much for spending time with us uh, that's what we just love about this whole organization is that every from every step of the way the kraken have just been awesome and uh it's it's a fun ride and it's just starting and uh yeah it, 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 that's the thing so john, oh, the rev never even liked sports before and now all yeah, he does is talk about the kraken it's, Hell it's, yeah. it's 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 awesome <laughs> 
we're on that roller coaster right now. We're doing is ascending right now, and our hands are up in the air. So we're we're not even there. We're not even at the top yet. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, if you want to get to John at any time on social media, just tweet him at John Forslund, the voice of your Seattle Kraken on Root Sports. John, thanks so much for being with us, buddy, and we will talk to you again. Thanks, fellas. Have a great day. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Uh, don't forget the first ever Seattle Kraken Super Skills Showcase going on this Saturday, 3 p.m. at Climate Pledge Arena. You want all the info? SeattleKrakenHockey.com. Just $10 tickets for that, man. Oh, man. I mean, plus you get to go to the lair. And oh, and I hope Big Shaq's Chicken is open, right? It better be. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It is time for listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. We got your calls. We got your texts at 936 on the rock. Hey, you got something to say? I got something to say. Yeah. They're wild. Yeah. Rapid. <laughs> and on the loose. This is listeners on the loose. 9.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's Listeners on the Loose, brought to you by SeattleBoatShow.com. Listeners on the Loose, you pick the topic, you guide the show. 206 421 Rock, text us at 77999. Make sure you follow Steve's rule. It's a simple rule, BJ. That's to show some energy and bring it. Otherwise, you shall be gone. And then we're going to have to say goodbye to you. Goodbye, old friend. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Uh, earlier this morning, we were talking about boneheaded things that people could do at work. And somebody had a, a great text that just said the boneheaded thing that happened when they were working. I once closed down the bar and left the lady passed out in the bathroom all night. I now oh. always check the ladies' room before leaving. I guess, yeah, if you don't think about checking that, I've passed out in the bathroom at a bar. Yeah, you know, and I don't, I mean, I just don't was go that, into it. Yeah. Was that the same day uh, that you uh, uh, yanked off the uh, the, the handicap bar uh, in Victory? Oh, no, no, no. That was, that was, I was a lot older. This is a lot younger. Oh. That was like more in my 20s, and it was a, a waste of night in Pioneer Square, and it was like our buddy ran the bar, so we were still drinking as the night went on, and I went to the bathroom. I thought to go hurl, but I guess I went more to just take a nap, <laughs> and I must have just nice passed work. out. I just remember... The, they had to climb under the stall because I locked the stall door. <laughs> and they had to, like, climb under it and then drag me out. And I'm like, and then my buddy Isaac, shout out to Isaac. He's a saint. Shout out. He, he drove me home and I'm like hurling out of his car. Oh, boy. And I'm like, yeah. I'm so sorry. I get out and he drops me off and I'm trying to like clean it with my sweater. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I was like, here, I gave him whatever money was in my pocket. He says, he ended up giving me some money back. He's like, you gave me way too much. He's like, here, just. Get it cleaned. <laughs> I was like, I felt terrible. Oh. <laughs> At least you had remorse. I know. Glory days. Oh, I don't know. Not so glorious days. Yeah. <laughs> mm. That's awesome. <laughs> 206 421 Rock Texas at 77999. It's listeners on the loose. So I said, guys, how about Team USA? Ain't nothing over China. That's right. US, US hockey or Olympic hockey for the men yeah. uh, just started up this morning. And, and, and man. Dude. Yeah, Team USA, off to a good start. Eight nothing, yeah, BJ. Yeah, eight to nothing. I mean, wow. Granted, uh, Team China is not in their level uh, of ability. Clearly, um, yeah. <laughs> you think? But, it, but it was cool seeing Matty Beniers, the guy first round pick for the for the Kraken, score a sweet goal. He sniped one in. Uh, and then uh, yeah. I think everyone on the team scored, but still, it was cool that he scored as well. <laughs> yeah, we, we, you know, you, you have an interest now. You know what I mean? As mm-hmm. opposed to just you know caring about your 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 country. We in Seattle, of course, want you know want to see our guy. So, yeah, you're right. Good start. Uh, earlier, we shared that story, a great story about uh, a guy who sent the self-addressed stamped envelope of a baseball, a football trading card to work done 20 years ago and never received the autograph back. But just recently showed up in the mail, work done, sent it back to him 21 years later. Yeah. So somebody said that apparently work done was notorious for not signing autographs back in the day. So maybe something something happened with him where he finally changed his ways. Or it was signed by someone else from Tracy and Puyallup. You know, though, I will tell you, I, I whenever anybody says somebody is notorious for not doing, like, signing autographs, a lot of it was because it became a business. And not that it was just like, oh, you're, I want to keep this for myself because I'm a fan of you. And I feel like some athletes get a bad rap because, oh, I'm sorry, I stopped your business of making money off of me. 
you know, and you're now notorious where it's like, eh, you ruin the aut- a lot of your business people ruin the autograph situation for a lot of kids. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you see it at any event where there's a celebrity and you just see someone show up with like a box of stuff and you're like, oh, you're not. And how do you have all this stuff at your disposal? Like, do you, is your trunk just filled with eight by tens just in case? I mean, it just yeah, seems like right. such a crazy thing. But I remember it was Jim Carrey. I always still laugh about this story. I was at a radio thing. Uh, for Man on the Moon, and Jim Carrey was there, and I was there with one of my guys I worked with, and he went up to him with like something from the Man on the Moon like press book or whatever, and he's like, "Can you sign this, Jim?" And Jim's like, "Sure." And he's like, "Well, who do you want me to make it out to?" And the guy was just like, oh, "No, no, no, don't, don't. I don't want it to be made out to anyone. Just, you know." He's like, "No, no, no. I, I'll sign it. I just don't want to see this on like you know a resale site." And so he's like, "Who, who do you want to make it out to?" And then the guy was like, well, I'm going to just send it. I'm gonna, we're going to do a charity thing, and it's going to go to the highest bidder. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, this is such a lie. Wow. Like, I can't believe you're even saying that. So Jim signed it to the highest bidder, Jim Carrey. And I thought that was so funny. <laughs> yeah, Jim knew. Jim could smell that. Yeah, he's like, he okay, I just want to be done with this autograph thing. Uh, you're clearly going to sell it. Screw yeah. you. Here's the here's your signature. I think there's a uh. story about Eminem, something along the lines of he signed it. I better not see this on eBay <laughs> and then signed his name for like a picture or something. I bet that will go for more on eBay, though. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, you know, Steve, I've been around people like that, too. And it, it, it ruins the vibe of any sort of goodwill you have with a celebrity when, again, it's not for you. You can tell it's, oh, hey, especially when you bring multiple items. It's right. like. What what is he supposed to think when you basically back up the merchandise train to have them all signed? Come on, do you? I know you're not a uh, autograph guy, Steve. I don't know if you are, BJ. But do you have anything like, thing, like really weird signed? Mine was a new. Uh, I, the only thing I had on me was a five dollar bill, and I met Noodles from The Offspring at, uh-huh. at a hotel, and I was like. Can you sign this? And he gave me the weirdest look, and he's like, "Sure, man, just signed it in noodles." And I still have that five dollar. But I'm not. I'm I not hope that times never get tough for you, where you have to give up that five dollar. Right? Bill. I need yeah. a Big Mac so bad. Let me know. I'll spot you five bucks. I don't want you to lose that, Danny. <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, yeah, that that is, it's it's fun. I mean, it's, hey, look, it's what you had, and if you never spend that, that is kind of cool, especially if you care. Yeah. Yeah. Someone has a text says, "I love those celebrity roasts," and I was thinking, who on the show do you think would be the most fun to roast? Oh, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Man, because... Right, Joe, because he's not here. Yeah. <laughs> we can roast him for never coming to work. Oh. <laughs> I feel, Well, you know what? I mean, look, there's a lot of reasons to roast people on this show, I suppose. But, I, I mean, look, I'm going to just put it out there. I think, Steve, with what your life has become... <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, if you just take a look at what your life is right now... Um, I mean, it's really. all cool stuff. I'm unroastable. What are you talking about? Okay. Oh, oh you're oh you're unro- oh, oh, unroastable. Oh, that, that, answer, that, Joe. that that answers the question. Did somebody just say they're unroastable? I think now There's you basically can roast me about everything okay. I do is awesome. Okay. No, that's fine. If they're all I mean, cool, you know what? I mean, hey, I think you've answered it for us. I, I think nothing uh, weird. I, I rest my case. Oh, yeah, nothing weird at all. Yeah. Yeah. I rest my case. I, I, I you know, I was going to say that, you know, definitely you're a, you're a front runner, but we could have gone down the rest of the show. But now that you said you're unroastable, nobody else in the show said that. So I, I rest usually, my case. I usually side with, B, or with Steve on this one, but no, dude, you would be the best one to roast. Oh, come on. That no, would be not, pretty not fun. You, I don't like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't uh, like that. <laughs> Look, you're a wrestler. Exactly. You have a toddler. There's just so much. You're gonna roast yeah. me about being a father? Heck yeah! Uh, we're gonna it's roast, a roast you about you're man. a father too. I know. We're gonna roast you about the kind of father you are. There we go. <laughs> a loving, nurturing. Wow. Yeah, there you go. Upstanding. Yeah. Oh wow, Vicky, yeah. you have someone else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, man. No. Uh, and by the you way, too. Steve, Come on, I the wow. cockiness for me, man. If you would have been a little more humble, I'd been like, oh, okay. Yeah, you kind of ruined it. No, yeah. you ruined it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really. unroastable. I'm being sincere. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's oh, even yeah, that's worse if it's sincere, all. Rock, humble brag central. <laughs> no. All right? <laughs> Steve, Clearly, you, I'm being very sincere about that. Oh, Steve, yeah. do you realize what you've just done? I've you've myself. had You've had the entire show agree with me, and you know how that pains them. Yeah, this yeah. hurts. Yeah, really this hurts does. real bad, buddy. I mean, well, then play uh, REM for you. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody hurts. I don't, you know what, joke or not, saying you're unroastable, I mean, at this point, I just feel like big, 
big target on your back, son. So his whole right existence now. is a roast. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, that's the idea is the roastable person has got to be somebody that's got a colorful life. And I mean, everything that you've done, and that's only just since we've known you on this show. Like, I don't know what you did previous, but boy, you have really ramped it up with just like, all the stuff you're involved with. I mean, I, like, I'm a pretty boring guy at these points. So, I mean, you can roast me going, yeah, he plays board games, he's a loser. And I'd be like, yeah, I really can't argue with that. Okay, next person to roast. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's really, there's really, but you, I mean, man, you're flipping people over in the ring while you're the, you know, you're the dad of this adorable little kid. And, you know, I mean, you, you started the dad thing a little later than a lot of people do. So there's, that's roastable. You also, you know, play music and you're all tatted up and you've been on stage with amazing bands. Like, how did the hell? I think there's just a lot there. Oh, yeah. thanks. But again, <laughs> a lot of stuff to mine from. I just want yeah, a lot of content. Yeah. There is a lot. I do want to remind the rest of the show, though. He's unroastable. So. Unroastable. Oh, I guess yeah. we can't do it. Verified and unroastable. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So keep coming soon. Wow. You Steve know what? Steve is unroastables. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I, don't I, what, feel I don't know like, what kind of food it would be, but. I, 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 I'll tell you right now, I feel like with that statement, man, if if the day ever comes, I'm going to enjoy it. <laughs> no. I mean, now that you're so unroastable, yeah. I love making people eat their words. That's so, all I'm saying. So I said you nothing know. weird about you, Steve? Come on, you're a goalie, for Christ's sake. <laughs> oh, I, I forgot about that. And a drummer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everyone oh, yeah. loves a drummer. There's nothing. No, there's, oh, yeah. No one makes jokes about drummers. What are you talking never. about? Oh, I've never seen that on the internet. I mean, oh, yeah. you're just Vin Diesel from Wish, so, oh. I mean, there's nothing there. Oh, we didn't say it too, bros, to me, Vicky. <laughs> wow. I mean, I'm just saying that there's really cool. not many oh, happening here. here. I'm saying so, there's stuff. There is a lot of material. Yeah, Daughtry's cousin that was in a car accident. Oh, you. Oh, oh, you know, <laughs> there's so much there. <laughs> Unroastable. Yeah. Wow, I feel like we're proving that you are definitely at least Jeez. slightly roastable. Man. All right, there you go. Well, there you go. Vicky so, came from uh, murder today. Congratulations. <laughs> By the way, best text ever. Thank you, texter. Normally, I don't like the text, but today that worked out really well. Uh Hey, we got a popular TV show that's coming back after nine years of not being on the air and with the original cast members. I'll tell you all about this at 951 on The Rock. DJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. Lots of people are very excited about this on the internets and the socials. More Futurama is in the future, thanks to Hulu. Ooh, yay. It's been almost a decade, really. <laughs> I know you don't care. I've Steve, never watched. I'm yeah. more excited. I just heard that Brewster Gold is going to be a show, so that's more important. Wow. Me. Okay. Well, uh, the original creators are involved. Twenty episodes. Matt Groening, uh, David X. Cohen, and pretty much every voice is going to be there. Uh, Billy West, Katie Segal, Lauren Tom, uh, all of those. But John DiMaggio, who played Bender. They're trying to talk things over with him, but he's not 100% official, man. And I'm not even a Futurama fan. I don't hate it. I, I thought the couple episodes I've seen are, are cool. But, like, that's a, that's the guy from the show, Bender. Yeah, yeah. Bender. I'm not sure how you cannot get this guy involved, and I don't know if he's... He's, he's a very prominent voice actor. He's in everything. Oh, he's going to about to get paid if they want him. Yeah, well, <laughs> they're gonna whether they get him or not, they, they say the season's coming out in 2023. Mig's play of the day. 21 years ago, a football fan named Eric mailed NFL running back Warwick Dunn a trading card and a self-addressed stamped envelope asking him to sign it and return it. Dude, my buddy Chris and I would do this all the time. I received zero autographs in return. He received an <laughs> upwards of 15 to 20. We did it the exact same way. Wow, that is so bizarre that you never got lucky one time. It just makes me... It, yeah, <laughs> I do, I mean, that sums me up all the way through college. Yeah. But, you know. DJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. If I call Travis, will I actually see him or someone who works for him? Absolutely. When you come in to see my to my office, uh, when you first call in, my staff will try to help you with, with any basic questions that you have. Uh, I can give you a call back, uh, but they'll schedule usually try to schedule you for a, a free consultation with me, the, the attorney. And I'll meet with you personally. We'll talk about your the basics of your case, and I'll take you through a question and answer session that usually last an interview that usually lasts about thirty minutes. 
Uh, we'll, we'll get the basics of your financial situation. I can answer your questions, and we can talk about whether bankruptcy makes sense, your, uh, your non-bankruptcy options, uh, and how bankruptcy could affect you, what the process is. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org.